Hello, I'm Father Joe Roche of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. Thank you for joining us as we continue with our year-long journey, reading the diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska from beginning to end. Today, we take up from where we left off, beginning with diary entry number 83. Write this. Before I come as the just judge, I am coming first as the king of mercy. Before the day of justice arrives, there will be given to people a sign in the heavens of this sort. All light in the heavens will be extinguished, and there will be great darkness over the whole earth. Then the sign of the cross will be seen in the sky, and from the openings where the hands and the feet of the Savior were nailed will come forth great lights, which will light up the earth for a period of time. This will take place shortly before the last day. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. Vilnius, August 2, 1934 On Friday, after Holy Communion, I was carried in spirit before the throne of God. There I saw the heavenly powers which incessantly praise God, Beyond the throne I saw a brightness inaccessible to creatures, and there only the incarnate word enters as mediator. When Jesus entered this light, I heard these words, Write down at once what you hear. I am the Lord in my essence, and am immune to orders or needs. If I call creatures into being, that is the abyss of my mercy." And at that very moment, I found myself, as before, in our chapel, at my kneeler, just as Mass had ended. I already had these words written. Once, when I saw how much my confessor, probably Father Sapochko, was to suffer because of this work which God was going to carry out through him, fear seized me for the moment, and I said to the Lord, Jesus, this is your affair, so why are you acting this way toward him? It seems to me that you are making difficulties for him, while at the same time ordering him to act. Write that by day and by night my gaze is fixed upon him, and I permit these adversities in order to increase his merit. I do not reward for good results, but for the patience and hardship undergone for my sake. Vilnius, October 22nd, 1934. On Friday, at ten minutes to six, when I and some of our wards were coming in from the garden to supper, I saw the Lord Jesus above our chapel, looking just as he did the first time I saw him, and just as he is painted in the image. The two rays which emanated from the heart of Jesus covered our chapel and the infirmary, and then the whole city, and spread out over the whole world. This lasted about four minutes, and disappeared. One of the girls, who was walking with me a little behind the others, also saw these rays, but she did not see Jesus, and she did not know from where these rays were emanating. She was overwhelmed, and told the other girls. They began to laugh at her, suggesting that she was imagining things, or that perhaps it was light reflecting, reflected by a passing airplane. But she persisted in her conviction saying that never had she seen such rays before. When the others suggested that it might have been a searchlight, she replied that she knew very well what a searchlight was like, but never had she seen rays such as these. After supper, the girl approached me and told me she had been so moved by these rays that she could not keep silent, but wanted to tell everyone about them. Yet she had not seen Jesus. She kept telling me about these rays, and this put me in an awkward situation as I could not tell her that I had seen the Lord Jesus. I prayed for her, asking the Lord to give her those graces of which she had such need. My heart rejoiced in the fact that Jesus takes the initiative to make himself known, even though the occasion of such action on his part causes me annoyance. For Jesus, one can bear anything." Well, this is a very full section with many very interesting parts. Uh, Jesus says that before his final coming as the just judge, he comes as the king of mercy. 
and he speaks of the, the sign of the cross in the sky taking place shortly before the last day. And the light will be coming through the parts of the cross where his wounds were. So we see the importance of the Paschal mystery and all that Jesus suffered for us. We don't know when uh, this will take place, but the Lord in his mercy wants all of us to be ready to meet him. The gospel message is that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Turn away from sin and believe in the gospel. We hear this over and over, so we have no excuse if we are not prepared. Every day is the day of salvation. Every day is a day for conversion. Then there's a beautiful prayer that we recite before the chaplet of mercy. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. After this, St. Faustina has a mystical experience of heaven. She sees Jesus entering into a brightness which seems to be the dwelling place of God. And Jesus seems to be revealing his divinity and his mercy for giving each of us the gift of life. Then St. Faustina writes about Father Sopochko, who had to take up the task of promoting the Divine Mercy message and devotion after the death of St. Faustina. And he also would have to suffer many difficulties, be misunderstood. His vocation was very much like that of St. Faustina. And Jesus reveals that Father Sopochko would get a high place in heaven, not from the good results that uh, came from his work, but for all that he endured with patience for Jesus' sake. And then there's the story of a student who was walking with St. Faustina and saw the rays of mercy emanating from uh, Jesus over the chapel and over the whole world. She didn't see Jesus, but she saw the rays. It reminds me of the story of St. Paul on the road to Damascus. His companions saw something. They didn't see Jesus, but they saw something. There are differing accounts of that conversion of St. Paul. So Jesus obviously can reveal his glory to whom he wills and when he wills. Perhaps this girl had need of encouragement or grace. We don't know. But St. Faustina prayed for her. Uh, and St. Faustina had to accept some awkwardness because she didn't want to reveal what she had seen. But Jesus worked it out. And so we see the, the generosity of the Lord and his, his, uh, his beautiful love for each one of us.